So how about this? In a forest with luminescent flora. Let's try this one. So I like this third one. And we'll do an in swap, which you just right click, press on apps, and then in swap. And then we'll see what comes out. And then here I am looking at my laptop in space. And I really like this one. This is cool. Today we're going to talk about face swaps and how I use face swap in my professional media creation. So if I'm making title cards or if I'm making images or if I'm trying to get a scene across that I can't personally be at, like if I'm making an image of me skydiving down, coding a ton of different codes with code flying all over me, that's probably not something that's very feasible for a very budget friendly budget. So with AI, you're able to make these magical situations come to life. So in this tutorial, we're going to do just that. And before we begin, though, I need to mention that this should be used responsibly. All right, let's dive into the computer and I'll show you how it's done. We're going to go and set up a server. So I'm going to create my own for us. It'll be called face swap setup and then you can add a photo if you want. I'm just going to create a random one and then from here, this is a blank empty server. So what you need is two things. Midjourney, because Midjourney helps you create all of these powerful images, but you don't have to use Midjourney if you just want to face swap with photos already created. But personally, for my use, I use Midjourney a lot. And we'll get into that later as I use character reference and show you why it's so powerful. So to set up the two things you need, you're gonna want to install Insight face swap by inviting it to your Discord server. So here's a link and I'll include it down below. And then I'll add it to face swap setup. So I'll authorize all this. And then now that's installed, I'm gonna go to Midjourney and install Midjourney as well. So to do that, I add the bot into the server. Okay, so on this page, you just add app, which is adding Midjourney bot to your server. So add to server, face swap setup, and continue. So now that we see both of these bots added to the server, all you have to do is add your faces. So you would go and press slash save ID, and then this will pop up. Now I've got set up three different images of myself that I'm going to put in here because having three lets the bot analyze three different images. And when one renders out bad or is not the right result, which you'll see, you could switch to another one. So I'm going to upload all three of these. So you need to give it an ID name. I'll name it RN1 for the first one. Second one, I'll also name it RN2. Third one, I'll name it RN3. Now you don't have to add three images. I just like to in case when I generate an image and it swaps over and it's not good, I like to use the other ones to test it all out. Okay, so now all of these are added. All you got to do is prompt an image on mid journey. So for example, we could do something like Asian man coding in New York City apartment overlooking city. And then I'll run that. Okay, so now that's run, you see that there's these characters. Also, I should have cleared this, but I had already referenced this character, which is referencing myself. So what you can do is add an image of somebody, in this instance, me, as an example, and then you copy this link, and then this is a trick in Midjourney where you would put suffix, which means every time that you prompt, it's gonna have this included at the end of your prompt. So I did character reference this image so that whenever I generate something, it's going to reference this character. Now, of course, it's not going to be 100% perfect, which as you see here is not like me at all. But with a reference, at least you have the clothing that's similar and the hairstyle and maybe the facial structure is similar. And from there, you can face swap in a lot easier. So from here, I could take the fourth one because I like seeing him overlooking the city. And then I'll face swap with one of the images that I had uploaded earlier. And from here, you can see that some of these images look a little bit strange. There's a bit of artifact on the eyes, but it's not a game changer. If you like this image, you can go on Photoshop or Canva and use a magic eraser to clean it up. Now we could also test out a different source face ID. So right now this is using RN3, but if we set the ID, which is typing in slash set ID RN1, for example, then it's going to reference RN1 and then face swap using that. So let's go back here. And this guy is already pretty close to looking like me, but let's go and swap. And now for this generation, it's going to reference RN1 instead of RN3. And with RN1, we can see that maybe this is more accurate. Like the face is not as 
strange like the other one had some artifacts but the jawline for this is a little strange the second one looks okay and essentially if you like these images you can save it and then there you have it that's how you do a face swap now i like to take this to the next level because as i'm using this to create title images and and using it for a professional purpose i want it to communicate this out of this world creation so what would i do i would like to be coding somewhere but maybe if i'm coding somewhere it could be while I'm skydiving or while I'm on an island or while I'm in the future. And sometimes I can't completely think of it. So what I like to do is to go on ChatGPT and then I would ask it to give me at least 10 scenes where a coder is in a wild environment, maybe a wild luminescent environment, maybe skydiving or in a laboratory full of code or a futuristic setting. So then here it's gonna give me some ideas. So I wanna add that this person is also coding, maybe coding on a laptop where are they coding and list it out in front of these results because I want it to include like a coder is doing this and this and at this place. Okay, so these are cool, but I want it to be a bit crazier. So I'll tell ChatGPT, let's make it more wild and crazier and see what we get. And then from there, we'll look at these results and then we'll go and try to generate an image based on these results. So for example here, this is talking about being in an underground bioluminescent cave. And then here are some other options. Now this one, skydiving at night with neon lit parachutes. This seems pretty cool. So let's go and try it out. I could do slash imagine this and then the reference of the characters already referenced since we did the C ref earlier. So let's have this run. Now this is also cool, hacking in a VR simulation and a tsunami of data. I wonder what will turn out if we do that. So I'll run that as well. And then I like to run a few at the same time so that we can look and see at the end and choose one that we like. Okay, now this one is in a cyberpunk alley surrounded by neon signs and holographic interfaces. This seems like it's super futuristic. So let's see what this looks like. And our first result has come in. Okay, this one's missing a leg, I don't like that. But the other stuff is cool. He's on a laptop, he's floating around in the sky. It seems like it's a really creative environment. Here, this is, the second one is not as futuristic or awesome as I thought it would be, but maybe the third one would be in a cyberpunk alleyway, which would probably seem really futuristic. But from the preview, it doesn't seem as crazy as I'd like, so let's make it even more wild. Okay, so how about this? Floating in zero gravity at a space station and coding on a laptop. Let's try that. So the one with the cyberpunk alleyway looks pretty cool, but it could be also modern day. Not completely wild, not something that I, can't just go to a city and do, right? Like if we're doing this, we might as well push it to the limits of where it's something that's almost impossible. So how about this? In a forest with luminescent flora, with cold fl flying everywhere and riding a robotic dinosaur. All right, this seems really wild. Let's try this one. Now, the one with floating in zero gravity is actually pretty cool looking already. We could use some of this and try and face swap it. So I like this third one. He's sitting on his laptop and we'll do an in swap which you just right click press on apps and then in swap and then we'll see what comes out and then here i am looking at my laptop in space and i really like this one this is cool this one is also cool the fourth one as well i'd like to try that one out and then we'll right click apps and in swap again and then see what we get and here we go it looks pretty good as well now the results for the luminescent flora just came in it looks cool but it's not completely as crazy as the idea made it sound like. I still like this space station one the best. So if we were to take this and use it for something like a piece of content or a title image, we should save one of them. So I'll probably save this one in space because I like how it really looks like I'm in space. So I'll save this one, right click and save image. If you want it to be higher quality, they do recommend you open in browser and saving it from there. I'm using the free plan, but if you pay for it, you have a bigger resolution. Now, how I take this to the next level is, for example, I have title images for Skillshare courses that I'm teaching. Now, if I like that image, I would just simply drag it in there, and then this would be part of my design. Maybe something like this. And then on the other side, we could include something else. And earlier I had created a robot, so we could put this robot in there, and then I'll send this backwards. So now we have two elements here of me and this robot, and then potentially add a text. And then let's change it to a sans serif font. Future of AI, for example. Now we have this text, and to make this effect pop out a little bit more, I'll add an outline or something to it. So from our face swap, 
we were able to bring it into an app like Canva. You can use Photoshop too, which I also use a lot. And then I created this title image out of it in a space station, which I can't afford a trip to a space station. So as I'm thinking about how to create these wild scenarios for face swapping and AI, I think about how we could push this forward and create some title images or title cards or imagery that conveys a sense of the future, which here is in a space station. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please use it responsibly. If you want more resources, I'll add links in the description below. And I do have a ton of classes out on AI as well if you want to check those out. And I'll see you in the next video.